welcome to this wonderfully happy occasion. I formally declare this congregation of the University of Portsmouth open. Please be seated. Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, and graduates. As Vice Chancellor of the University of Portsmouth, I am honored to be sharing this important occasion with you, our graduates, and with your partners, parents, families, and friends. It is a great privilege to welcome all of you to Portsmouth, whether from our great city or from further afield. On behalf of all the staff at the university and our visitors here today, I would like to congratulate all of our graduates on your well-earned achievement. The fact that you are at this ceremony demonstrates your capacity for learning, growing and giving. I continue to be amazed at your energy for learning beyond the boundaries of your chosen studies, for growing into outstanding professionals with knowledge and integrity and for giving your time in making a difference to those around you. I am immensely proud of your achievements, as you should be also. It is an amazing fact that this year, over 5,000 of our students were active in volunteering within our community, with almost 40% of our students engaged in student placement and career enhancing activities. I cannot thank you enough for your commitment to your studies and your broader development as worthy citizens. Too often, whenever we turn on the news or open a paper, we are faced with a barrage of bad news. There is no doubt that we do face unprecedented uncertainty with immense change happening all around us, not least our relationship with Europe, social unrest and instability around the world, and right now within our own UK political parties. It really would be easy to be pessimistic. And then a data like today comes along and I see passionate, highly skilled and educated people such as you, full of ideas, ready and prepared to reshape our world. What is certain is that the world more than ever needs people like you. And seeing you graduate today is a tremendous feeling and a welcome reminder that our future is in good hands. Of course, that does not mean that your future journeys are going to be easy, but what is clear is that the demand for the kind of graduate skills you have developed continues to grow. Your University of Portsmouth qualification has real value in the UK and on a global stage, as it provides the edge that will be vital to tackle the many challenges that the world faces. Today, you are graduating from a university that is recognized as part of the modern global elite of universities, a university that is bold, not old, a university which is a catalyst for change and which has a strong sense of energy, flexibility and dynamism. A university to committed to providing the very best experience, an experience that leads our graduates to make a real contribution to society. Just under 93% of our graduates from last year were in work or further study within six months of graduation, which is a real achievement in the current economic climate. But remember, that in graduating today, you are part of a privileged minority that has had the advantages of a university education. With that privilege comes responsibility. Please reflect upon your obligations as graduates of this university. You are trustees of the skills and abilities you have developed. I urge you to use your talents to help enrich society and make a difference for the benefit of others. Raise aspirations among all those you encounter and set an example in behavior and achievement that others will seek to emulate. 
you have lived in a diverse environment for the past three or four years. Take that appreciation of difference and culture and friendship with you in all that you do. This year, we have been so proud to see Tim Peake, one of our former students and an, and an alumnus of the university, hurtled into space for six months to carry out many important scientific experiments and then return safely to Earth. He is a person who has captured the imagination of our nation and raised the aspirations of millions. Tim's recent mission with the European Space Agency has been truly inspirational for so many of us, both young and old. Of course, Tim could never have achieved his great ambition of space exploration without an exceptional team to support him. Not just the European Space Agency and the British government, but also the designers, the space scientists, the engineers, and many individual supporters, including family and friends. As you too think about achieving your greatest ambitions, think about the exceptional team you have around you. You've had the support of the university community all through your time here. Our excellent staff have provided a supportive environment in which you have learnt, lived and flourished. Your fellow students have no doubt lifted you through the tough times and celebrated with you in the good times and will remain lifelong friends. And of course, those closest to you will have been your most exceptional team. Parents, partners, children and friends will all have helped by providing the encouragement, the shoulder to cry on, the listening ear. But most of all, they will have kept faith in you and willed you to succeed. I think it's appropriate that your graduates should stand up and with a warm round of applause, join me in thanking your family and friends who are here today. Please stand up and give a round of applause. Can I, can I just say that considering all the help they've given you, I think you can do a bit better than that. A bit louder, I think. Brilliant. I think that's a lot better. You can sit down now. The university has been part of your elite team, supporting you throughout your time here, and we'd like to remain part of your team in the future. We want you to be successful because your successes and achievements will reflect well upon your university, and of course, the success of the university reflects well upon you. And your university is on the move, with the Telegraph newspaper reporting last year that we are one of five universities in the UK to watch. And I am proud of us being a university within the top 2% in the world and within the top 100 global elite of modern universities under 50 years old. An amazing achievement. Today is just the beginning of a lifelong relationship with your university as members of an international community of Portsmouth graduates. Please make use of our excellent alumni association and keep in touch as you continue your journey through life. We want to know where you go next, as you will be the future leaders, thinkers, creators and innovators. Be a force for positive change within a world that needs your talents. And when you are successful, please come back to visit us and be part of our elite team supporting future generations of Portsmouth students. I urge you to live by the values of your university in all that you do. Be responsible, be open, be ambitious and never settle for second best. I congratulate you on your awards and wish you every success for your future. Thank you.
And of course, the main purpose of today and the bit that we're all looking forward to is the graduation of our students. But before we actually do that, there are some formal words that myself and the Chancellor have to say to officially confirm that everyone who is graduating has a right to do so. Chancellor, I certify that all those presented at this ceremony have successfully completed their studies and have satisfied all the conditions and requirements of the university. By the authority of the university, I confirm that all those who are duly qualified are hereby admitted to the awards for which they are presented. Chancellor, I present to you the following successful candidates from the School of Social, Historical and Literary Studies for the Bachelor of Arts in English and History, Chloe Anderson. <laughs> James Clayman. And with first class honours and the Stevens Prize for the best dissertation on imperial and maritime history of early modern Europe, Scott Daly. <laughs> Sophie Fallows. <laughs> Amy Robinson. Ravinda Sidhu, and with the Robbie Gray Memorial Prize, Catherine Ward. Theodorus Zachariades, in English and Media Studies, Harriet Brown. Thomas Graham. <laughs> Sophie Mansfield. <laughs> and with first class honours, Connor O'Brien. <laughs> In English language and literature, Kerry Arthur. Eden Barrett, Amy Eburn, Lauren Felix, Sophie Foster, Catherine Harris, Emma Kerridge, and with first class honours, David Kirby. Bethany Matchett, Isabel Oxbury, Haley Sherborne. Harry Telford, Rhonda Thomas, Rachel White, and Kerry Williams. In English literature, Eleanor Baxter, Olivia Begley, <laughs> V. 
Victoria Bookham. Daisy Breed. Kirsten Broadway. Christopher Cool. Blythe Davis. Charles Davis. Eve de Klerk. Samara Devereaux. Bethany Dormer. Laura Duck. Harry Ellis. Sydney Etheridge. Georgia Gillett. Sophie Hajikiri Argos. <laughs> Teresa Hanley. Adam Holyoke. Isabel Lanson. Anna Diaz. Amy Jakes. And winner of the Julius Burstall Memorial Prize for the most creative student performance in English literature, Anna Judd. And with first class honors, Vivian Minter. With first class honours, the Blackwell's Prize for the Best Overall Performance in English Literature and the Centre for Studies in Literature Prize for the Best Final Year Essay in English Literature, Laura Morris. <laughs> Katie Patterson. <laughs> Joanna Pollock. And with first class honours and the Blackwell's Prize for the best dissertation in English literature, Shika Sharma. <laughs> Hannah Stevens. <laughs> Patricia Swift. <laughs> Simone Taylor. Lewis Thorogood. Charlotte Tully. Sam Wilkinson. And Millie Wilson. In English with Psychology. Henry Blake. And Sophie Peak. In history, with the Josephine Butler Memorial Prize, Colette Adams. Luke Allen. Emma Allison, Sarah Andrews, Amelia Bennett, Joseph Benton, K. 
Katie Blake. Jack Bowman. Kane Bradley. Harry Boutramus Gare. Rory Carroll. Amelia Christie. And with first class honours and the Elizabeth Prize for History, James Clark. Matthew Copeland, Jack Daniels, James Dacal, Luke Downs. Francis Dunn, Robert Dyer, Daniel Field Gillard, Josie Freeman, Michael Gardner. Sophie Gardner, James Horn, Samuel Howe Berry, Jack Honeybun, Alex Jenkins. Christopher Jenkins, Connor Jones, Stephanie Kerr, Luke Leapins, Alice May. Patrick McCarthy, Sydney McGoran, Harry Merchant, Callum Meredith, Joe O'Brien. William Perrett, and with first class honours and the Gro Robbie Gray Memorial Prize, Joseph Pierce. Tony Plater, Rachel Richardson. Benjamin Rosier, <laughs> Sophia Simmons, <laughs> Alexander Skinner, <laughs> Martin Stevenson, <laughs> Milo Tirangoon. Zoe Thompson, <laughs> Jacob Thorpe.
Jack Tinney. <laughs> William White. <laughs> Lauren Whitehouse. <laughs> and with first class honors, Chad Nadir Wilson. William Wright. Oh. And Priscilla Barr. In history and politics, Elisa Brown. Samuel Clark, <laughs> Rafael Golino, <laughs> Daniel Griffin, <laughs> Alexander Hennessy, <laughs> David Hillier. Francis Mello, <laughs> William Payne, <laughs> and Daniel Reist. <laughs> In journalism, Thomas Andrew. And with first class honours, Alex B. <laughs> Matthew Bishop. <laughs> Jack Bolton. <laughs> Ross Bramble. <laughs> Jamie Clark. And with first class honors and the journalism school prize for the best special investigation, Liam Connell. <laughs> Sophie Kerr. <laughs> James Haxel. With first class honours, Callum Hoare. <laughs> With first class honours, Darren Hunt. <laughs> Charlotte Johnson. <laughs> Sam Megan. And with first class honours, the Portsmouth News Prize for the best overall performance in journalism and the School Prize for Excellence in NCTJ examinations, Georgina Moore. <laughs> Sasha Morris. And with first class honours, Danny Ryan. <laughs> Joshua Searle. <laughs> Nicola Slade. <laughs> Kimberly Smith. <laughs> Ryan Smith. Claire Stapley, <laughs> and with first class honours, Molly Stook, <laughs> Matthew Storey, <laughs> and 
Lauren Surridge. Paisley Rose Tedder. Tony Thomas Donald. And Stephen Wynne Davis. In journalism with English language, Jason Butler. Robin Craigie Windlands. Rory Deegan. Ellie Dykes. And with first class honours, Rebecca Edwards. And with first class honours, Matthew Horan. Gabriella Howard. Gemma King. Jess Leatham. Anna McKellar Ricketts, George Nicholson, Matt Rhodes, and Guy Thornbury Phillips. Journalism with English Literature. Emma Hesling. Amy Lauper Bull. Sarah Lindsay. And with first class honours and the school prize for the best journalism dissertation, Charles Makemson. And with the school prize for the best journalism dissertation, Charles Mitchell. <laughs> Ryan O'Leary. <laughs> journalism with Media Studies, Laura Allgood. And with first class honors, Aisha Batia. <laughs> Jessica Dabaid. <laughs> Daniel Jessup. <laughs> and with first class honors, Ryan Johnston. Hams in Kingsley, Corinne La Victoire, and with first class honours, Marta Luica Romero. Claudia Rose Miles. And with first class honours, Celeste Mott. Kimberly O'Hanion. Olawasian Ayatundi Olungunwa. And with first class honors, Rahima Rahim.
Katrina Russell. James Strudwick. Hannah Tate. George Taylor. Parak Walker. Olivia Woodward. And Yasmin Young. Chancellor, I present to you the following successful candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts in International Relations. Nasa Al Sayad. <laughs> Anna Jahen. <laughs> Thomas Austin. David Binks. Matthew Blowers. Alfie Cooper. Charles Dennison. Ruth Dobson. James Gray. And with first class honours and winner of the school prize for the best dissertation in international relations, the Nellie Haddad Memorial Prize, Gemma Humphreys. Sadia Hussein. Jessica Nunn. Nikhil Patel. Samuel Stevens. And for the Bachelor of Arts in International Relations and History. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Aleshi, Aleshi Yadir. And for the Bachelor of Arts in International Relations and History, Roland Baxter. <laughs> Luke Cottle. <laughs> Jonathan Davies. <laughs> Jack Hobbs. <laughs> Oliver Smith. And for the Bachelor of Arts in International Relations and Politics, Varunan Bellandran. <laughs> Taylor Bennett. <laughs> and with first class honours, Jessica Brown. <laughs> Danny Burgess. <laughs> and with first class honours, Michael Carr. John Clifford, <laughs> Alex Davies, <laughs> Adam Delacour, <laughs> Chidinma Denna, <laughs> Henry Welland, <laughs> Fatmata Kaloko. 
Adam Leng. Justine Letart. And with first class honours, Erin Lockhart. Kaylee Logue. And with first class honours, Jack Longman. Emile Marchant. Miles Martins. Leonard McIntyre. Amal Mohammed. Christian Engarkia. Soliwalup Omo Sebiola. Edirin Onojafi. Callum Parks. David Parry. Christopher Roberts. Melissa Rodriguez. Aroma Sampson Ichendu. And with first class honours, Adam Stansby. Jodie Sullivan. And Peter Ture. For the Bachelor of Arts in Politics, Melissa Bishop. And with first class honours, Michael Comfort. Oliver Crisp. Benjamin Davies. Vanessa Eugenio. Liam Gardner. Oliver Hayes. Taylor Hodges. Patrick Kehoe. Harry Kidd. Jack Lissamore. And with first class honours, Hannah Lucas. And with first class honours, James McKendry. Evangeline Sell. And with first class honours and winner of the Willem Fried Memorial Prize for the best dissertation in politics and the school prize for the best overall performance for two years in politics and international relations, Matthew Smith. <laughs> and with first class honours, Anna Maria Stoika. Alex Ward. Robert Watson. And May Webster. For the Bachelor of Arts in Sociology and Media Studies, Claire Entwistle. Jamie Hamill. Paige O'Brien. 
<laughs> Chantelle Osi. For the Bachelor of Art of Science in Sociology, Rory Allen. <laughs> Simon Aston. <laughs> Guy Avery. <laughs> With first class honors and the Henry Walton Memorial Prize for the best dissertation in sociology, and the Waterstones Prize for the best performance in sociology, Samantha Byrne. <laughs> and with first class honours, Daniel Chamberlain. <laughs> Francesca Coloratolo. <laughs> Cameron Cox. Yasmin Crepe, <laughs> Pamela Tsieneka, <laughs> Davina De Cambre, <laughs> Eleanor Druitt, <laughs> Diana Edwards Osborne. Francis Fjord. <laughs> Katie Gray. <laughs> and with first class honours, Stephanie Green. <laughs> Caitlin Hamilton Wu. <laughs> Sean Hodgson. Natasha John. And with first class honours, Matilda Jones. Holly Keary. Shane Curtin. Jack Layton. And with first class honours, Claire Lovell. <laughs> Nina Maple. <laughs> Dylan Meta. <laughs> Gloria Mensa. <laughs> Laura Mills. Joseph Mitchell. Astrid Moon. Tia Neal. Zeta Nkrumah. Erin Norris. Sean O'Brien, <laughs> Eleanor O'Sullivan, <laughs> Faye Pert, <laughs> John Pitches, <laughs> and with first class honours, Chloe Plummer. Pat Charaporn Syria Mornpan. <laughs> Lucy Turl. <laughs> Rebecca Tesfe. <laughs> Madeline Vinin. <laughs> Daisy White Smith. 
and Abby Wilde. For the Bachelor of Science in Sociology and Criminology, Emily Ager. With first class honours and winner of the school prize for the most improved sociology student, Iva Ash. <laughs> Oliver Banks. <laughs> Gabrielle Barker. <laughs> Lacey Budnick. <laughs> Megan Bunce. Kirsty Clark, <laughs> Rachel Coatsworth, <laughs> Megan Davies, <laughs> Sophie Davies, <laughs> Omprit Daliwal, <laughs> Lucy Dobson. Kevin Doncor, Samuel Finch, Shannon Fitzgerald, Bethany George, James Gordon. and William Gray. With first class honours, Charlotte Harris. With first class honours, Jessica Herbert Maynard. With first class honours, Edward Hawley. Suchin Kanani, <laughs> Maria May, <laughs> with first class honours and the school prize for the best performance from sociology combined honours degrees, Vincenzo Malili. And with first class honours, Sarah Nichols. <laughs> Rachel Noakes. <laughs> Roland Owusu. <laughs> Shrena Patel. <laughs> Chloe Pierce. Lauren Pollard, <laughs> Simi Rolt, <laughs> Peter Silence, <laughs> Ryan Smith, <laughs> Sarah Smith. And with first class honours, Lauren Stevens. <laughs> Abigail Tilly. <laughs> Luke Tomsett. <laughs> Ellis Tustin. <laughs> Taja Vijay. Brad Young, for the Bachelor of Science in Sociology with Psychology, Shannon Austin, Arabella Bunnett,
April Dawn Butler. Jem Cranham. May Fordham. And with first class honours, Liam Harrington. Victor Muchimeyi. Christia Paraskeva. For the postgraduate diploma in history of war, culture, and society, Michael Hagen. For the Master of Arts in European Law and Policy, Marguerite Deckers. For the Master of Arts in European Studies, John Evely. And with distinction, Franzi Feyer. For the Master of Arts in History of War, Culture and Society, John Bolt. For the Master of Arts in International Relations and European Studies, Ellen Torn. Gayan Yu Zhang. For the Master of Public Administration, Hoi Man Choi. Chukwimika Okoloi. And with distinction, Louise Parker Jones. Essie Akwanyi Sam. And for the Master of Research in Politics and International Relations, Otis Mubaiwa. <clears throat> for a Doctor of Philosophy, for a programme of research in the transparency of expertise in EU policymaking, which was supervised by Dr. Karen Heard Laureate, Mark Field. for a programme of research in local government, transnational networking in Europe, a study of 14 local authorities in England and France, which was supervised by Dr. Karen Heard Laureate, Christopher Huggins. <laughs> for a programme of research in sailorhoods, Sailor Town and Sailors in the Port of Portsmouth circa 1850 to 1900, which was supervised by Professor Bradley Bevan, Louise Moon. <laughs> For a program of research in the Boys Brigade and Urban Cultures, 1883 to 1933, a relationship examined, which was supervised by Professor Badley Bevan, Christopher Spackman. <laughs> this concludes the presentation of students from the School of Social, Historic and Literary Studies and today's ceremony.
Today, of course, is all about our students, and it's so it's appropriate that we now hear from one of our students. Chancellor, I present to you Liam Connell, BA Honours Journalism, to respond on behalf of the graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, I remember on my first day of university being dropped off at my new home, taking a deep breath and plunging into the unknown. Today, we do the same thing. We take a deep breath, shake Sandy's hand, then graduate, plunging once again into the unknown. But before we do that, we have the chance to celebrate everything that we've achieved. My fellow graduates, this is it. We did it, we're here, and we've earned it. We've earned the long gown, the hat, and the parchment. But most of all, we've earned today, a day of celebration. Before we can celebrate, though, there are many people I would like to thank on behalf of all the students sat here today. Firstly, our tutors and lecturers. The people who've helped us through exam nerves and essay panic. The people who push us more than anyone ever has done before, who have supported us all the way and celebrate our achievements as if they are their own. Thank you for inspiring us, for believing in us, and getting us this far. To our parents, guardians, family, and friends, thank you. Thank you for being our personal fan clubs, for supporting us both financially and emotionally. Your love, help, and belief has seen us through some of our most stressful times at university. Our achievements are your achievements, as without you, today would not be possible. Most importantly though, thank you for giving us the chance to make you proud. Thank you to the University of Portsmouth and all the unsung heroes that work behind the scenes. The learning support team, the admin staff, and the graduation team who have worked tirelessly to make our big day unforgettable. Thank you for the past three years and for allowing us to study in the beautiful, sometimes sunny, but very windy city of Portsmouth. <laughs> we also need to thank each other, our course mates and peers who have become our friends. In Shules, we are lucky enough to be a small community, a little family of journalists, historians, politicians, sociologists, and literary experts. We have taken each step together and created a bond that could only be made through writing a 10,000 word dissertation. Today, we celebrate together and get the chance to throw our caps up in the air side by side. Finally, we should thank ourselves. We did this. This is our moment to celebrate. Our moment to show off and say, look what I did, I've earned it, aren't I great? It's easy for us to see graduation and university as the norm, but it's a huge achievement. The parchment we hold today is made up of every little moment that's... <laughs> it's made up of hard work, our hard work. Um, so for that, we should hold them with pride and celebrate. Today is our celebration. Today, we forget about where our, we, what our future holds or where this parchment will take us. Instead, we can focus on what we've achieved and reminisce about every little moment that's taken us to this point. Today, we hold our heads up high and become proud University of Portsmouth graduates. So graduating class of 2016, before we take one last deep breath, one last plunge into the unknown, let's celebrate. Because after all our hard work, We've definitely earned it. Thank you. Fantastic, how brilliant. And I expect what you want most at this moment is a really long speech from a small woman dressed as a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Well, I'll try and cut to the chase uh, <laughs> and provide a potted version of a few things I would pass on to you. Um, first of all, can I address myself to the mature students today? You don't need any advice from me. You have already made the brilliant decision of pursuing further education, and I salute you. Let's hear it for the mature students. Now, what about you brilliant young people? Well, first of all, you are brilliant young people, and don't let anyone in the older generation tell you otherwise. I have every faith in you, and I can only apologize from the bottom of my heart for the many messes my generation has been responsible for. doesn't mean I don't have a few things I would suggest to you. Uh, first of all, be in the moment. Well, what does that mean? Well, instead of tweeting and texting people who are not with you that you are having a wonderful time, try having a wonderful time with the people you are actually with. Sometimes that may even be your parents. And, um, and now that you are officially grown up, uh, you may be shocked to discover there is more to them than you thought. Uh, if eventually you have kids of your own, can I just pass on a quick rule of thumb uh, that I learned? Never have more children than you have car windows. It's really, I think. <laughs> parents, a quick note to you. Uh, there may also be more to your kids than you thought. And you will soon discover this, as even children with a degree are unlikely to leave home. So good luck with that. <laughs> Take the time to consider others. Uh, if you don't, then one day they may well fail to consider you. If you have religion in your life, good for you. I hope it brings you comfort. But use it for good and not to set yourself above or apart from anyone else. At the core of all religion is a single word, and that word is love. Have passion and compassion in equal measure. Don't dwell on your failures, okay? Learn from them. You know, if you're running a race and you fall over a stick, standing and staring at the stick is not going to help you to finish the race. <laughs> if you ever have a job which bores you rigid, please leave. Life is too short. And never settle for anything less than passion in choosing a partner. You deserve the best, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> Any more? Well, uh, beauty. You all look so beautiful today, and that's because you are young. <laughs> Bad news, it's not going to last. Um, boys, your hair is going to go. Girls, you don't want to know what's going to go. <laughs> but here is the good news. Your inner beauty knows no bounds. Always remember that your brain and the store of knowledge that you have, even with a degree, is in its infancy. Think of the books there are to read, the music there is to listen to, the art there is to get lost in. Seek it out. Never stop learning. I envy you the journey ahead. And fight for what you believe in. It, it probably seems an odd thing to you, but nothing pleases me more than seeing young people in a rage or being radical. So Liam said to me that he was at the ceremony yesterday and he was tempted as a journalism student uh, to write down my speech in shorthand and then give it just before I was able to. And I, I thought it was a fantastic idea. I wish he had done it. I think it would be wonderful. Life is nothing. Uh, without sometimes changing the rules, and it is certainly nothing without being passionate about the things that sometimes will me mean that you get angry. Uh, a few years ago, there were protests in London by students about the appalling increase in university fees which your generation has suffered. And my son, uh, 16 at the time, he phoned me up and asked me if he could participate. And I said to him, darling, here is a key thing you need to learn about protesting. You don't ask your mother, you just go on with it. <laughs> Thank you.
I'm not inciting you to protest about anything today. That would make me the worst chancellor on the planet, and it's far too happy an occasion. But I am encouraging you to please, please participate, particularly at the moment, in what happens in the world. And at the same time, uh, allow for the possibility that you might sometimes be mistaken. It is politicians with entrenched views and closed minds who have landed us where we are today. Listen as much as you lecture. It is perfectly possible to be very clever and have a big streak of stupid. Um, <laughs> there was an early 20th century Russian physician called Alexander Bogdanov, and he experimented with blood transfusions in search for eternal youth. After 11 transfusions, which he performed on himself, he declared he had suspended his balding and improved his eyesight. In fact, he'd infected himself with malaria and tuberculosis and died shortly afterwards. <laughs> so be careful if you think you're right. Uh, I'm running out of time, which is a common feeling at my age. Um, so I leave you with this. Uh, sometimes, for all of us in the room, sometimes rough things happen, but you can get through them. I think about uh, the genius that was Beethoven, his Ode to Joy is probably my favorite piece of music. It comes from uh, the astonishing Ninth Symphony. By the time the symphony was ready to be performed, Beethoven had gone deaf, and what an irony in life he never heard that amazing piece of music. Nevertheless, on the night of the premiere, he was seen running through the streets of Vienna shouting, grab life by the throat. Do that, for that is the best advice of all. Go change the world, it wants doing. Many congratulations. I formally declare this congregation of the university closed. Please be upstanding. Oh.